God is working out his purposes in history. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Our theme, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. May it ever be before us. It is God's initiative. It is centered in Christ. It is global and cosmic in its scope. Billy Graham encouraged us, keep evangelism at the center. Keep your focus on Christ. Make the scripture your foundation and pray, pray, pray. This third Lausanne Congress has already been described as the most representative and diverse gathering of Christian leaders in the nearly 2,000 year history of the Christian movement. We are 4,000 leaders from 198 countries. We represent virtually every stream of global Christianity. We represent the demographic, theological, and cultural realities of the Church of Jesus Christ. We are joined tonight and this week by over 100,000 people at nearly 700 global link sites in 96 countries of the world. This is the first time in history this has been possible due to the developments in technology. They are not only able to watch, but to interact with us and with one another. 47, 40 percent of our participants are in their late 20s, 30s, and 40s. One third of our participants in, are in women in leadership around the world. 1,200 of us are missionaries and church leaders. 1,200 are pastors and denominational leaders. 1,200 are scholars and academic leaders. And 600 are women and men from the worlds of business, government, the academy, medicine, and media. We are here as a global congregation. 4,200 people plus 1,100 staff, volunteers, and media and stewards. God is here. He promised his disciples, I am with you always to the end of the age. He is with us here this evening. He is also with our brothers and sisters in China who are not able to be with us. God, we ask you to bless them. And God, would you make them a blessing in their hour of need, in their hour, their sense of isolation and being confined to their homes when their heart's desire was to be here with us. And God, we ask that you would bless their nation and give wisdom and understanding and grace to their leaders. I pray that this Congress, which has been reported on as the most diverse gathering ever, ever will be reported upon as the most united expression of the church that the world has ever seen. Jesus prayed, may they be one, Father, just as you and I are one, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Authentic community is a precondition of, of authentic and prophetic witness in our world. We were created to belong. We were created to be with one another. May we find in Cape Town a sense of being home. We have come to Africa, and Africa will be our home for this coming week. This is a Congress that is global in scope, but African in flavor and nuance. We want the global church to experience the vitality of the church on this continent, to know the aspirations, the challenges, the sorrows of the African church, and so to be blessed by it in return we want the global church to be a source of blessing as we have come from Latin America, Asia, the Pacific, the Middle East, North America, and Europe to say, we are with you, Africa. We praise God for you. We love you. We have come to receive what you have to share out of your riches. Thank you, Africa, for welcoming us. Thank you for bringing us to your continent. Thank you, South Africa, for welcoming us to your country. And thank you, Cape Town, for opening your hearts to us in the most beautiful city in the world. <laughs> Archbishop Arambi, I think this is where God completed his work of creation in the continent of Africa. And he lingered a while and did beautiful work. 
Congratulations all to, to South Africa on hosting a spectacular World Cup, perhaps the best the world has ever seen. And we, congratulations to South Africa, and in ways that are truly amazing beyond what we could have asked or imagined, we as the Lausanne Congress are beneficiaries of coming just a few months after that great world event. Just one request. We know that you Africans are exciting, excitable, and expressive people. And there will be plenty to excite you in the days to come. But could I ask that when you get excited, could you leave your vuvuzelas at home? <laughs> As a Presbyterian minister, I don't mind some amens and hallelujahs. And I know my African-American brothers and sisters will provide a few help him Jesus words of encouragement along the way. But please, no vuvuzelas. In the midst of all the excitement and all the activity, we have come to listen to God and to discern His voice. If God is still speaking to the church as we enter the third millennium, if He has something to say to us in these opening years of the 21st century, what is it He wants to communicate to us afresh? Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Speak through your word, through your servants, and by your spirit. God, we have prayed many times. As we are together, give us a gift. Grant us a fresh vision of yourself, a vision for the church, and a vision for the world. We have come to dream. In those days, the prophet Joel said, when I pour out my spirit, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. We believe as we are gathered here this evening, as we have seen the grand narrative of history, redemptive history, we believe that the future is as bright as the promises of God. Why have we gathered here in Cape Town in the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Lausanne, which is a spirit of love and humility, of study and prayer, of partnership and hope? As we seek the voice and the vision of God, we come as a people who share much in common. We are united people, united in our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior who declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. We know this to be true because we have, entrust, we have been entrusted with the Bible, the inspired and authoritative Word of God. We are a people who are united in, our, in, in the great gift of the new birth and eternal life through faith in the ultimate triumph of Jesus on the cross, demonstrated through the power of his resurrection. We are also united in our commitment to world evangelization. As the church, we seek to bear witness to the resurrected Christ in our times, to love, to live, and to proclaim the gospel, to renew the church, and to transform our societies. As we carry out the mission that is before us, we seek to obey the great commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. The great requirement, what does it require of you, O man? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. And the great commission, all authority has been given unto me. Therefore, go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. In these days of preparation for the Congress, we come with hopes and expectations, anticipation, aspirations. But there are some who are concerned that perhaps we have paid insufficient attention to the foundational importance of theology. There are others who are concerned that we have given insufficient attention to the demonstration of the gospel in social responsibility. Others concerned that perhaps insufficient attention is being given to the proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ. Let me assure you that over the course of the last three years, scores of theologians have met together in consultations around the world on profound theological reflection on the nature of the church, the nature of the world, and also the nature of the gospel. I'm also pleased to tell you that before the Congress has begun, that working groups, the, the strategy working group, the theology working group, a host of other committees have met to discuss matters relating to our social responsibility. 
I'm also pleased to tell you that over the course of the last eight months, in partnership with the African Enterprise, Lausanne has helped to sponsor Mission Africa, 15 missions in 13 countries. African evangelists teaming up with evangelists from around the world, and over 500,000 people have heard the gospel as a result. And over 50,000 people have made commitments to Jesus Christ even before the Congress has begun. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But there are also great challenges before us. Throughout history, it has been incumbent upon the leaders of the church to gather us together. When the future of our life has been threatened either by external pressures or internal problems. Today, we are faced both with external pressures and internal problems. We have gathered here to wrestle with those issues that impact the church around the globe. Global challenges require global conversations in pursuit of global responses and solutions. We will reflect this week on the vision of Lausanne, responding to God's call to the whole church to take the whole gospel to the whole world. In his letter that was read earlier this evening, Billy Graham encouraged us and admonished us to assess the new realities of our time. Globalization. Only a few years ago, some anticipated a new world order, an order that would be characterized by peace and prosperity. How is it that so soon there are all those who are already writing about the clash of civilizations? We have seen this evening images, wars of identity and ethnicity and religion. Dr. Tunnicliffe spoke earlier the backdrop of the world that we know as we have come this evening. Two primary issues will be in view during these coming days. First has to do with how do we share our faith with those of other faiths? Though there has been tremendous growth of the church in so many parts of the world over the last 100 years, there has been precious little impact in inroads made among those of Islamic, Hindu, and Buddhist communities. But there are some promising develop, developments. How do we live in fidelity to the gospel and to our mission mandate while at the same time being courageously and lovingly engaged with people of other faiths? May it be that the word is incarnated and dwells in the midst of our neighbors. We will also be dealing with priorities for sharing the gospel in our globalized world. In 1974, Dr. Ralph Winter introduced a new paradigm at the First Lausanne Congress, speaking about unreached peoples. He estimated at that time that there were some 16,000 unreached people groups. The number of unreached people groups has shrunk dramatically in recent years, but how can it be that there are still those 2,000 years after the time of Christ and 36 years after a call to take the gospel to all nations at that Congress that there are those who have not heard? We pray it is our desire that by the time there is a next Lausanne Congress, if and when there is one, that the number of unreached people groups will be at zero. We pray that the church will also be mobilized so that those who have been on the forefront of Bible translation can tell us at the next Congress, the number of languages that have no scripture in their language is zero. During this Congress, we have brought together the best minds of the global church to wrestle with the biggest problems before us, as well as the most gifted and courageous and creative leaders to help us seize the great opportunities of our time that are on the horizon. As we think about the whole church, we will deal with two key issues. First of all, the call to authenticity. The church is not the waiting room for the hereafter, though we do eagerly anticipate the glory that awaits us. The church has been left in the world to be a transforming community, salt and light. But we know that too often we fall short. There is a need for us to provide a prophetic critique of how we live an honest appraisal of where we fall short so that we might repent and become more and more what he has called us and intends for us to be. A church that will be characterized by integrity, humility, simplicity, people who are known as bridge builders and peacemakers in our world. In addition to dealing with a call to authenticity, we will also be a part of the establishment of a new 
global equilibrium, we have seen the shift from the north to the south, from the west to the east. But as we gather here, praise God, we are a part of the most global entity on the face of the earth. And we pray that this will not be a time when we simply say we move from one part of the world to the, to the other, but all of us gathered together from north and south, east and west, young and old, lay and clergy, men and women will say, we are God's redemptive people. And I trust that as we meet here, we will sense the tremendous riches that God has brought to us. Over the course of the last three years, I have had the opportunity to travel some 600,000 miles to 60 countries in all 12 regions of the world. And everywhere I go, I ask, what gift is it that you have to share with the body of Christ? And so we dream and we pray that during the course of our days together, this will be an international gift exchange. As we see where God has blessed us and others are in need, we will share generously and joyfully with them. Not only do we think about the whole world and the whole church, we also will be thinking about the whole gospel. It is our desire that as we begin each day in expositions from the book of Ephesians, that it will be evident that the scripture is front and central in our lives and in the work of world evangelization. We pray that in the days and weeks and months to come, the, the message of the book of Ephesians will reverberate around the world. And we trust that we will experience great teaching and preaching, which will be a model for younger pastors and teachers also around the world. We trust that God will use the impetus of this Congress to eradicate biblical poverty in our time and in the decades to come. As we think of the whole gospel, two key issues. One has to do with reaffirming the authority of Scripture and the uniqueness of Christ. There is a sense that in many parts of the world the church is losing its confidence, a sense of ambivalence. We pray that we will move from ambivalence to confidence, not arrogance. We reject a spirit of triumphalism. However, we differentiate between a spirit of triumphalism and the ultimate triumph of Jesus Christ on the cross, which we wholeheartedly embrace. We trust that we will move forward in bold humility. And then also we will be dealing with the theme of the Congress. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. May it be that followers of Jesus Christ are known for their humility, for their sense of hope, and for their role as peacemakers in homes, in families, in churches, in communities, in societies around the world. We have come to pray and to study and to dream with the hope that we will know the reality that indeed the future is as bright as the promises of God. We have a dream that in 100 years, when historians are writing the history of this century, they will be able to look back and say, thank God. There were people who, like the men of Issachar, they gathered in Cape Town and they understood the times and they knew what the church should do. I trust and we pray that the whole church will indeed take the whole gospel to the whole world with a sense of joy and with a sense of hope. Proclaim Christ until he comes. Let the earth hear his voice. God is in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And now, brothers and sisters, as we have gathered together from around the world, the work begins anew. Hope rises afresh. The dream of Jesus Christ as Lord of the universe lives on in our hearts until that day when we shall be gathered around the throne, complete with men and women boys and girls from every language, every tribe, every tongue and nation, lifting our voices in praise to God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Amen and amen. Now I invite you all to stand up. Let's bow our heads before the Holy God and pray for this Congress that the Lord will move in the power of his Holy Spirit. Let us pray. 
Father, we thank you that you have brought us together. Leaders of our nations, men of stature and women of stature, servants of the Holy God, we have come, many of us, with a lot of burdens. And we know, God, you will lift those burdens away. Some of us, perhaps hurting, and we pray that you will heal us. Some of us, perhaps, we have lost our vision. But Father God, we pray you will give us fresh vision. We ask that your presence will be upon this Congress, that the power of God will move, and the will of God will be in the forefront. We raise those who will be speaking, let God, you will fill them with the power of your Holy Spirit, that you will make them speak clearly to your people, that we shall miss nothing. We ask that you protect each one of us, that this week will be a week with a difference, that after this week, as we go back to our own respective countries, we shall go knowing with a new freshness in our spirit that we have been with the Lord. And let your love so bind us together, allow for fellowship to take place, break barriers, and Father, will you unite us in that bond of love one for each other because we love Jesus Christ. And we pray that Jesus will be lifted up among us and crowned as King of kings and Lord of lords. We pray, Father, that this city will know the peace of God, that the people of Cape Town will know that God's people are gathered here. And Father, that peace will settle upon this city. And we want to thank you for those who are working out there behind the scene. May you bless them abundantly. And we glorify your name because you are God. Father, we pray for those who possibly are not feeling that they can even stand up and perhaps trying to hide. Lord, will you encourage people to be able to speak to one another, to be able to pray for each other, to be able to minister to each other, that together as a body we will be bound together strong and ready to reach the world for Christ. We bless your name and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. And Amen. together as we stand shoulder to shoulder, we want to pray the prayer that the Lord has taught us. And I will ask you to pray in your own language because God has taught you in your own language I will try and lead you in English, but please pray in your own language. Together, our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Will you sit down, please? Rejoicing in the providence of God that has brought us together in a historic way from the four corners of the world, I invite our discussions for the Third Lausanne Congress for World Evangelization to begin. I now declare the Third Lausanne Congress for world evangelization to be open. Let the Congress begin. Amen. Amen. Michael. Brothers and sisters of the Church of Jesus Christ, I offer this blessing on our discussions and the work of this Congress. Rejoice, O peoples of the world. The Holy Spirit has called us together. The God of our forebears has made us His church. The sun walks among us here in Cape Town, for we are gathered in his name.
The Lord bless our time together. The Lord make his face shine on our dialogues and debates. The Lord be gracious to us even as we seek to be gracious to one another. The Lord look upon this Congress with favor and give us peace. Amen, amen. and amen.